Welcome back. In the workshop this week, I make an IKEA Beckham style step stool from oak, sapili, and a digbo. It's coming up next. You know, when you do fitted furniture or built ins, one of the things I really enjoy, possibly the only thing that I really enjoy, is actually getting in to see other people's homes, not in a weird, sort of stalkerish or voyeuristic way, but the sort of people who can afford the sort of furniture that I make tend to have some quite nice things. Um, in the sitting room, you're likely to find that an Eames lounge chair is almost commonplace, as maybe a, an Arco floor lamp. In the home office or study, those important papers will likely be illuminated by an angle poise 1227 or perhaps a Tizio desk lamp from the 1970s. And in the kitchen, well, it doesn't seem to matter whether it's a country farmhouse chic or Swiss clinic aesthetic. I can virtually guarantee that there'll be one of these tucked away in a corner. This is IKEA's Beckham step stool, and it's so universal, it's almost ubiquitous. This white painted version cost just £14, and yes, that one is from my kitchen. And I bought this plain birch one for just £13. Matt Smith from Badger's Workshop has one of these as a shop stool come sawhorse. And at £13, why not? It's not even worth making one for that kind of money. Which admittedly does give me a bit of a problem for the hook in this video, because it's pretty clear that even if I use the cheapest off-the-shelf 2 by one pine, I probably couldn't buy the timber for just £13. And even allowing £14 that the painted version costs, £14 worth of my time doesn't go very far either. But I do have £15 worth of hardwood. Maybe I can make one from that instead. Now, I am killing two birds with one stone here. As an honorary member of the Essex Makers official group, I took part in the Three Easy Pieces Challenge. You just head out to the Hardwood Offcuts shop in Essex in Brentwood on the last Saturday of the month. You pick three lumps of wood off a pallet and pay £15 for the privilege, and you make something from them. And I've decided to make a Beckham. Structurally, the Beckham is very simple. It's two frames joined by four rails, with a lower step and a seat slash top with a routed handhold. And I make a start by planing my rough sawn sapili oak and a digbo into shape. I'm letting the timber I have dictate what goes where, so it's sapili for the frames and rails, a digbo for the step an oak for the seat slash top. And with everything machined to the approximate thickness, I'm using the track saw to cut the sapili into strips. Then thickness them close to the final dimensions. I'm using the original Beckham step stool as a template to cut the framework to size. And then to arrange the parts and tape it together temporarily while I mark where the dominoes will go. Once both frames are marked, I can cut the tape between the joins and machine the domino mortises. Note I'm using spare pieces of the framework to help support the domino. After a quick dry fit, pretty snug, I can start gluing up the frame. Normally when you join frameworks at an angle like this it can be a bit of a challenge because of the angles, but using a slightly wider and slightly deeper mortise on one side of the joint makes this pretty straightforward. The other way to do this is to cut the mortises straight into the ends of the rails and then cut the angles afterwards, but I wasn't together enough to do that this time. When it comes to clamping up, note how I'm using little offcuts from cutting the angles to make the clamping easier. All right, 
tells you. Well, that's that from cutting to machining to glue up in a day. <sighs> Got to do the join those two halves together, then tidy up the top and the bottom. I'm going to finish on it. Now I did make a bit of a mistake here on the back from the front leg is joined to the frame with a bridle joint so it's really very strong and I've joined mine just on the front face of the frame with just a domino so it won't be anything like as robust. I am absolutely not recommending this method of construction but you know what I'm going to leave it as it is and we'll see just how strong or weak it is and if I get any catastrophic failures then I'll be sure to let you know from my hospital bed. After a decent amount of time, the frames can come out of the clamps and I'm cleaning up the faces with a hand plane just to smooth things out. I know, hand planes and me. I can scarcely believe it myself. Now, because the sides of the Beckham are cantered inwards, I'm setting my track saw up for a five degree bevel cut and running a test against a sliding bevel taken from the original. And after a final check to make sure I know which side of the top edge I'm trimming back, I can make the cut with a track saw. And then remembering that I also need to trim the framework for the step as well. And then move on to the feet, making the reverse cut from the top edge, obviously. And with both frames done, I can use a chisel to pare back the little area on the step framework that the blade couldn't reach. I then spend a slightly ridiculous amount of time measuring and marking up where the dominoes will go for the rails that connect the frames, before realising that I can just as easily use a piece of scrap as a gauge instead. I'll work my way around both frames before putting mortises into the ends of the rails and as before I use a combination of a slightly wide and slightly deep domino mortise to make it easy. Okay, okay so first dry fit on the stool isn't looking too bad. No wobble which is good. And then we've got the, the dig bow as the bottom step. oak for the top. So a little bit of unevenness on there. I don't know if that's the wood or the frame. <laughs> I could probably take a guess. Um, and this is a little bit janky but I think that's just how it is. We've got to figure out how to fit these on of course. But uh, yeah okay pretty happy with that. Okay pretty happy with that. Uh, I think we need to get that sanded then we get it glued up uh, one o'clock. Time for a quick bite to eat because my stomach is rumbling and I've had a video go live an hour ago and I've no idea how it's doing so uh, yes all right first glue up looking good uh, first dry fit looking good we'll get that sanded quickly and then we get some glue on it and then I can be thinking about where to put the hole and hold in the top. I'm sanding with a combination of a random orbital on the faces and orbital on the edges before getting ready for the glue up. Earlier on I marked which rails mated best with which faces using an awl and this really helps after the pieces have been thoroughly sanded of all their markings. And so the glue up really is just a matter of joining the dots and just as a precaution I've moved this to a known flat area as the glue dries and I'm taking a minute to wipe off the excess glue with a damp cloth. While the adhesive sets I can sand the adigbo step and wrap the handhold in the oak top. I used the original Beckham top as the template for this and routed the shape with a bearing guided template cutter. 
Then it's a quick round over and a thorough sanding. I'm a bit short of time now, so I decided to simply screw the step and top onto the framework using counterbore screws to ensure the heads are well below the surface. Because of the framework, the screws to fix the top in place are a little tricky to get in, so I'm very glad I've got my right angle drill. And with everything screwed up nice and tight, there's just a final wobble test. And then it's on to a finish. I'm using Keith Rag & Bone Brown's oil wax finish, which goes on really well with a stockinette cloth and brings out the colour in the timbers just a treat. Thanks for that, Keith. So there we are, uh, <laughs> colours come up nice with a bit of wax, we'll let that dry overnight and I'll get that uh, down to see the guys in Essex tomorrow, see what happens. And that was that, I'll have more on the Essex Makers official three easy pieces challenge meetup in another video so keep your eyes peeled for that one but silly constructional mistakes aside on this I'm really very happy with how it turned out and I hope you've enjoyed watching somebody like me fumble their way through their first hardwood project in probably 44 or 45 years I was certainly still at school when I did my last one if you did enjoy it then give the video a thumbs up share it out amongst your friends and don't forget to subscribe for more weekly workshop videos or consider supporting the channel on patreon as my patreon supporters get extra exclusive content and i want to say thanks so much for all my patreon supporters whose contributions really do make a huge difference uh, be sure to check out the blog post on the companion website at 10minuteworkshop.com for additional information if, if you're feeling spendy then please do pay a visit to my amazon store for links to the tools i use and products that i recommend but that's it for this week thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.